Welcome back. My name is Kit. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, a podcast that talks about TV shows and movies. We're doing a big Star Wars series right now, waiting for our Fallout to drop in April, about to go to South by Southwest. But right now, we've got one of our patron mandated movies, a big surprise coming ahead. We've got a guest here, a very special guest with us today. No Face, how are you? Mm. <laughs> Very good to have you here. Very good. Stop trying to give me things. It's not what we do on the podcast. We're just going to get your thoughts on the movie. What's your history with this film? Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> with audio listeners, uh, we do have actual the no face himself. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Most of our people are just listening. Like, I know. What? Tune into YouTube to see the actual you no face. <laughs> I almost said tune into YouTube to see the actual YouTube. <laughs> That's also true. But I. Uh, plot twist that isn't the real no face it's Kyrie. yay hello Kyrie. welcome welcome thank to the studio you. thank you for joining us i'm happy to be here <laughs> Woo if you couldn't tell otherwise the joke wouldn't make any sense the film we're talking about today is 2001's spirited away from hayao miyazaki uh, the legendary movie and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to dive we were actually given a choice to be clear yes between howl's moving castle and Spirited Away. And I selfishly chose Spirited Away because I had just watched Howl's Moving Castle a month prior to being asked that. And I have to read, no matter how many times I've seen a movie, I have to rewatch it when we're gonna do a podcast about it. Cause I, mm -hmm. I don't want a moment where I'm like, and then they, you know, did some stuff. Um, <laughs> did some things. Even though that happens anyway sometimes, cause mm -hmm. movies are long. But uh, so yeah, that's why I chose that. But Kyrie. Tell us about you. You're our guest. You've never been on streaming things before. What what what, <laughs> what are you bring to the table? Cards um, all cards up. What are you bring to the table, girl? Let's see. Um so I was born and raised. <laughs> 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 no, I'm the I'm the host of Flights of Fantasy on YouTube. It's a show where we look at different science fiction and fantasy movies and ask what do they mean? And there's a lot of just tomfoolery. <laughs> what do they mean? What do they mean? And what's your, your YouTube channel called again? Flights of Fantasy. Flights of Fantasy. Go check that out. You guys are going to love Kyrie. I've known Kyrie, uh, God, like almost 10 years now. Is that kind of fucking, it is, does yeah. that kind of blow your mind? It's 10 years this year. Is it this year? Jesus, tap dancing Christ. Uh, <laughs> no, so Kyrie and I went to college together. We were fellow NKUers, Norse, Norse up, baby. And the uh, Kyrie, I always would tell people, she's my producer on everything I did in college, all my videos, Kyrie was my producer. I trust her implicitly. She's very smart, very capable. She knows what she's doing at all times. And so really when I, f I found, I, st I didn't know you because you know, we graduated. We haven't really hung out in a long time mm -hmm. just because life takes people in different places. And, but I've always thought like, I hope the kid's doing well. Cause I, I used to call Kyrie the kid. I, I hope the kid's <laughs> doing well. And uh, I, I forget how it happened, but I was, I stumbled upon your YouTube channel Flights of Fantasy, and I was like, "Fucking hell, she's killing it! This is hilarious! This is funny! She always has a great wardrobe." I mean, you were dressed as No Face. You also have a Chihiro mm -hmm. outfit that you're currently wearing. Uh, always on point, always funny, great. You had some pretty well, good success you. with your the Grinch broke Jim Carrey video. I got to tickle the algorithm a little bit, which yeah. was very exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was that like? Unexpected, and I've been trying to prepare myself for when that algorithm goes away um, to mix success, <laughs> as you do. As you do. We're, we're all prey to the algorithm gods. We don't I know it. We, we, we stumbled across that this week for sure. Uh, literal sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so thank you for joining us, Kyrie. It's always wonderful. We we're, we're, But we're going to dive into this patron selected movie. Do you want to know who selected this movie this week, Chris? No, I don't care. Kit, you don't care? No, let's move no? on. Okay. Ah, that's probably <laughs> ah, Okay, you, ah, we almost got you. Uh, this comes from Infamous, the patron who picked that's it. That's their name. It's that? not like the Infamous. No, no, no. no that's just, <laughs> it's just the letter in famous. Zodiac Killer. Oh, uh, they're a fan of the show. That's <laughs> weird. So I asked, I reached out to Infamous to see why they chose this film because uh, he became a patron of the film. Uh, patron of the of streaming things at the level where they can mandate what movie we watched. He picked Spirited Away or How's Moving Castle. And this is what he said about Spirited Away, why he liked it so much or why they liked it so much. Uh, so I've always been a fan of animation. 
there is just something about it that feels there's just something about it that feels like there is so much passion and imagination put into it. And I genuinely believe no man does this better than Hayao Miyazaki. Every frame has so much care and detail that I notice new things each time I watch his works. And Spirit Away has to be one of his bests. I had a hard time choosing between two of his films, but I'm so glad you guys picked this one. It also happens to be the first Ghibli film I ever showed my wife. Anyway, it's such a beautiful film with a heartwarming tale about a daughter trying to save her family. I can't wait to hear y'all's thoughts on the film. Thank you for taking the time to see such a beautiful film, and I really hope this comes out the way I mean it to be... <laughs> because honestly, words is hard. <laughs> words is hard. I words agree. is hard. Reading words. is fundamental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As Steve professed accidentally while reading that. Words is hard. Words <laughs> is hard. <laughs> Thank you, Infamous, for selecting this film and for supporting the show. Thank you to all of you who support the show financially at patreon.com slash streaming things, but also all of you who support the show simply by listening. It's very much appreciated and uh, uh, we'll, we'll never get over it. We'll never get over it. So what we're going to do as usual, we'll talk about our overall thoughts about spirited away, our history with this film. We'll do our best. I didn't take the same level of notes. I normally do. I've got some help with from the interwebs here, but it's a strange movie. It's more of a vibe. So as far as the mm -hmm. play by play scene by scene, we'll do our best. Uh, and then that'll be the whole show. That's it. That sounds like a plan. I felt like I was leading somewhere, but that's it. Oh, you led us to the conclusion. Well, we, we've been doing Star Wars episodes all day. So I, I was like, oh, then we have the skit at the, the no, Medal of don't. Honor. The the the, yeah, <laughs> no, we got we, Yeah, Yeah, this is just straightforward, baby. This is nuts and bolts. The nuts and bolts. Yeah. Indeed. So Kyrie, tell me, what is your history with this film? And uh, what was it? What was it like watching it again? Yeah. So this movie, I think it came out in 2002 ish. Um, and I'm sure you guys have also experienced with this where you are, you know, a young girl and mm -hmm. have, <laughs> have either one of you, did either one of you move when you were younger or like in your childhood? Uh, I, oh yeah. Yes. Just that awful feeling of moving when you don't want to and leaving behind all of your friends and fam and not all your family could presumably coming with you, right? Or maybe not. Maybe. Two Christmases. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I think this uh, movie encapsulates that, but also it encapsulates the kind of that that painful feeling of like knowing that your childhood is over and how you don't always want to let go of it and how sometimes you just have to grieve it for a little bit and then come to an acceptance of it. So I think that's kind of what this movie speaks to. And I think it's why it's so universally loved. Absolutely. Absolutely. Steve, I'm curious to know, and actually I'll open this up to both of you before you talk about your spirited away thoughts, Steve. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about, are you huge fans of Studio Ghibli in general? Have you seen a bunch of them? Where does this rank as far as the, you know, the Ghibli tree? I'm just a big old hoe for, ho for <laughs> Miyazaki. Mm -hmm. he, he, they, they, they don't miss. <laughs> they don't miss. They just do not miss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't seen all of them. I've seen a lot of them. I and I've never seen Porco Rosso. I've it's never the best one. <laughs> I've never I'm seen big. Ponyo. <laughs> um, and there's a couple other ones. Uh, what's the very uh, Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind? I've never mm. seen that one. Uh, but that's about it. I've seen all of the other ones. And mm. uh, Spirited Away is up there for sure. Princess Mononoke is personally was my favorite until I saw Wind Rises recently. Um, which was a devastating movie mm. and uh, would have been a great, like it was supposed to be Miyazaki's last mm. film and what a send off that would have been. Cause like studio Ghibli, Ghibli is like a, it's a type of plane. Um, and then the wind rises is all about the plane. And so he was making it a really meta, uh, like look at his own career and his own fascination with telling stories and like being destined to do that. And it would have been a great send off. And he said, I'm retiring. And then he came out and did Boy in the Heron recently. And He's everybody's retired like, like six times. Yeah. And Boy in the Heron is apparently like a, I haven't seen it yet, but it's supposed to be like a wonderful send off Motherfucker's the well. Ric Flair of animation. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm going to make Mononoke cry. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> but uh, where does Spirited Away rank in, among, amongst your, your Ghibli faves? Um, if for nothing else, nostalgia reasons, it's it's, it's definitely up there. But Princess Mononoke um, and also Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind, those two rank pretty highly for me. I haven't seen Grave of the Fireflies because I've been I'm not emotionally ready to cry that much. It's um. devastating. <laughs> I didn't I don't usually include that. It is Studio Ghibli, but it's not Miyazaki. Um, but you're right. It is Studio Ghibli, it, but it's fucking devastating for sure. It's a good time. Mm -hmm. You just want to not move for a day. Put that sucker on. <laughs> 
That <laughs> sounds like right up my alley. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Steve, what moving. about you? Are you a, are you a Ghibli fan? So uh, I might I might lose some some points here in people's eyes because like I I have not seen most of the Studio Ghibli catalog. I've only seen Spirited Away, uh, Wind Rises, Porco Rosso, and one other one that I'm I'm blanking on right now. But I've only seen a couple of them. And while I, whenever I watch them, I can always sit back and like, wow, the animation is so good. This is so creative and imaginative and wonderful. It's just there, I feel like there's a lot lost in translation for me because so much of the, these movies are like birthed in the cultural touchstones of, of where it's made. And because I live where I live, I, I, I can't connect with it as much as I, I want to. Like a lot of people can connect to it really easily. And I've never been like an anime person. And I know, I don't know if you can even really, do you, can you call Studio Ghibli stuff anime? I think I, I, it is it, technically anime. It's technically anime. But it is, but it's like head and shoulders of, like above the standard of anime, right? Like mm. it's like a the it's, king of it. Sure. Yeah. Yes, I think you'd say that. But I've never been like a huge anime person in general. Um, and so whenever Ooh. I watch these movies- Ooh, ooh. <laughs> believe it. Uh, <laughs> just, you can't just throw no face back in there. <laughs> uh, the so I always f- kind of feel bad because you know these are this, these are movies that people just hold so dear, and I completely understand why. It's just not something for me. So whenever I watch, for instance, Spirited Away, this is the second time I've ever seen it. I watched it many many years ago, and watching it again this time, I kind of had the same you know, the exact same take almost was like, this is really inventive. This is creative. This looks gorgeous. I'm so fucking lost. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck is going on. Um, what are the three headed, what are the green three head dudes? Like, I feel like there's so much metaphor and symbolism that I would totally get if I was more culturally, um, not culturally ignorant as I am as a human being. Like it's all on me. <laughs> I, I I could be completely wrong, but I'm going to push. I'm going to actually say nay. nay. I don't nay, think sir. I don't think there is. I, no? I, Miyazaki. Uh, I think it's more of a vibe. I think Kyrie hit the nail on the only theme in this movie, which is about a young girl and like trying to capture a child's fear and foreboding at moving to a new place. Um, and sure, I'm sure there's like cultural touchstones as far as like what the spirits are you know i know that mm-hmm. uh apparently miyazaki cleaned up a river as a kid and he based a lot of like the river spirit stuff in this uh at the heart of this film on that he even pulled a bicycle out of it when he was cleaning it and mm-hmm. the bicycle that they yank out of that spirit at one point but uh other than that i think it's just kind of a vibe i mean miyazaki famously does not use a script yeah he did not with spirited away he just kind of went along he said he doesn't yeah, have time for that he has a quote that says like i usually don't have time so the story develops when i start drawing storyboards the production starts soon while the storyboards are still developing it's not me who makes the film the film makes itself and i have no choice but to follow it and i think that's why there's um kind of a a anti-western structure to these stories it's certainly not like a three-act structure to this film or anything like that he planned out he's just like and then the fucking heads come bouncing in i'm guessing you know and, uh, <laughs> but that's part of the reason why i, was, I, was, I don't think I the think heads are like his brother and mother and father or anything but that's part of the reason why i think there is a little bit of a disconnect for me is because like for instance a really niche nerdy thing that i am very steeped in pro wrestling whenever i talk about pro wrestling to people i can see their eyes glaze over because mm-hmm. the words i use the language i use is completely different and stupid and it only comes out in that moment when i'm talking about this specific thing and i feel like there is a visual language a a, a way You're of talking making about the steve austin accent <laughs> yes <laughs> so go steve austin says i'm gonna go i'm gonna walk my ass down to the bathhouse your baba's gonna come right up there give me the best bath of my life give me hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that the SmackDown it. Hotel? Is that, is that where everyone's going? <laughs> yeah. It's just the bathhouse. Uh, but yeah, I do think there is some like visual language that I'm just, I I, I don't have a lot of uh, experience with. So I do think it, it is lost on me uh, just because I'm not experienced. But if I like sat down and watch all the Studio Ghibli films at once, I feel like by the end of it, I'll be like, oh, okay, I get this structure, this style so much more. And I can appreciate it more because... I watched, like I said, I've only seen a couple of these movies and I watch them once every 
10 years or so. I don't mm-hmm. know. I think when you watch it is also a pretty integral part of getting the vibe of Ghibli. Like when you're a kid, you're, you're not really looking for three act structure. You're looking for whatever, whatever comes up. Mm-hmm. So I think if you had maybe watched this when you were younger, you would have that uh, this movie's all about nostalgia and you would feel that even, even more so in a kind of concentrated way. Oh yeah, for sure. Cause there's so much, this is such a colorful, beautiful, vibrant movie with like really well-drawn characters that like really just jump out of the, the, the screen really at you and you have to take notice of them all like Yubaba's giant huge face and nose like wh- there's a scene in the movie where Yubaba gets like right up into Chihiro's face and it's like uncomfortable that's how some of this art is when you're watching it it's just kind of like I'm here you have to see me yeah and I think um it's fascinating because we pretty much only let her watch Miss Rachel and uh Elmo um, but every now and then I'll watch a movie with my two year old, you know, and for the most part, it's just like she stares at it for 10 minutes and then raises hell while I watch it. You know, I <laughs> um, love Elmo. I do. Um, but I, I, I think it's fascinating to watch how a certain, like a baby reacts to certain <laughs> things because uh, she's two and she watched the entirety of Spirited Away. Uh, oh, wow. And was like in rapt attention to it. And I think that that's like a, a fascinating you know, facet of the, of the the chemistry of this movie and what it does to the mind of a child. Cause she's mm-hmm. just like, you know, she doesn't know, she doesn't understand the words uh, for the most part. And cause you did, you did subs like a, like <laughs> yeah. an adult. I was actually going to ask you guys, <laughs> did you watch this sub or dub? Um, I first watched it as a dub and I, I'm like, hey, but I, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen the sub version, but I also think oh, wow. dub is really good. <laughs> I watched sub. No hate for me. You watched the sub? I watched sub. But before you like, before you nerds out there give me credit for doing subs over dubs, I had no choice on HBO Max. They were like, you're watching subs, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually think the, the the dub is fine, but I don't think it's as good. And I'm not like a meh, animation guy or anything. Mm-hmm. Like, I just want to be clear. Just like off the cuff reaction. I don't think the dub is as good as like later Miyazaki films. Mm. I am one of those people that really appreciates like a real voice actor. However, I think it's really cool that eventually Miyazaki films are littered with like Christian Bale and Benedict Cumberbatch and Dakota Fanning. And like, those are all the, of each role in her, but this is like 2001. So it's just a bunch of actual voice actors that, you know, I, I don't, I don't recognize. I think for me personally, and I've seen it probably 20 times, but when I was watching it the other night, I was like, sometimes it's getting on my nerves a little bit. Whereas mm-hmm. I, if it was a sub, I wouldn't have, you know, because you get the Japanese. If you watch a lot of anime, they have like a, a there's a certain mm-hmm. inflection to some of it that's very strange to me in the West. But like you just get over it really quickly. But when mm-hmm. they're doing that inflection in English, it's like. Girl, chill, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Da, 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 da. You know, they just like whatever she's saying, she's just like super high pitched, freaking out about something. And I'm just like, relax. But I know it's just it's an anime thing. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. But when I do watch anime, I typically watch the sub because I am I really do not like the that. What would you call it? An inflection that like yeah. typically is the female characters too. Well, they'll go really high like this. And, you know, it, yeah. just, it doesn't feel authentic in any way. Yeah, like Misty from Pokemon kind of thing, you know? Don't, don't go dragging my girl, Misty. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I love Attack on Titan mm-hmm. and I can't stand the English dub for the most part. Like um, mm-hmm. um, Armin's, whoever does the voice of Armin makes him just co- totally undermine. He's supposed to be this like tactical genius and his English voice is like, guys, I don't know. I'm really scared right now, guys. And but it, and I was I hated it. I watched the whole first season like that and was like, I don't know why everybody's so obsessed with this. And then I found that I could change it to a sub, which is usually my preference on anything. And it, it's way his. I'm not going to do it because it might be really rude and inappropriate to mimic. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just like way different in the Japanese. He's mm. you know uh, he's got this more baritone like. I don't know. It just works out better. So I was, was curious about that. I, I did most recently watch the dub. I've seen it both ways. Um, and I think it works better as a, as a sub for me, but yeah. I think the first time I watched it, it was the, the dub version. So it was nice to like see the sub version, even though I don't really remember any of the voice acting from the, the, the sub. Yeah. 
or the dub. The, I didn't know you'd um, never seen Howl's Moving Castle. I would have chosen that one. Or maybe I did know and I still picked this one. I'm selfish. I, I didn't say any. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so, you know, honestly, like if we could have picked Howl's Moving Castle, it would have been great. But also I was kind of like, we could watch Spirited Away. I kind of want to want to watch that revisit again. Revisit that and see what that is again. Yeah. There's a little bit more of a narrative structure to Howl's Moving Castle. And the fact that you had never seen it before might have been more enjoyable. But and Christian Bale, does, if you watch the dub, voices the main uh, character. Yeah. Pretty nice. Pretty cool. Oh, uh, does he soak anybody? No, it actually does the whole thing in <laughs> Patrick Bateman's voice. It's really weird. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about my castle. <laughs> I wake up in the morning and make sure that, yes, it is still moving. <laughs> I do 12 push-ups. 1,200, excuse me. <laughs> I like that you don't know what the movie's about, but you just went with castle and moving. <laughs> Alpen Dragon <laughs> is an illusion. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, the, Steve, any other overall thoughts on Spirit of the Way? No, I want to, I want to hear yours. I mean, it's a great movie. I don't think I, I, most of my friends, and I mean parasocial friends that talk about movies, not like actual friends, uh, think this is a masterpiece. Oh, I hope they're not listening. <laughs> I just mean, I have met some of them. Uh, they know who they are. Most of my friends think this is a masterpiece. Five stars, cross the board, t cream of the crop. I, I don't feel that way. I think it's amazing. And I like Kyrie's point of. If I had seen this, I don't think I watched this as a kid. I don't mm. think I saw this at all until I was in my late teens, if then. Um, and I still like really appreciate it. But I can imagine, you know, if I was like eight, not that you have to be dumb. I mean, just like you have to be like outside the structure of what life does to you. You know, when you're not thinking about interest rates or taxes or impending in, in, in death. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but just like really open to whimsy and, and mysticism. I think this would just transport me. Um but unfortunately, I had I only saw it as a boxed in adult, you know, and you're I was too like, jaded. It was like, what the fuck is going on here? You know, kind of thing like you're saying. But after successive rewatches, it is. Uh, it doesn't like lose me at any point or anything now. I'm like, oh, the fucking dust mites. Yeah, that's what they do. I love the dust mites. Yeah. The soot sprites. She's got bouncy heads. The soot sprites. <laughs> Just bouncy heads. Who cares? Who cares? The They're dragon there. is a boy. I don't know why her head's so big, but I don't I care. I love the idea of a woman who's like, <laughs> all right. I, I need a bird that spies on me. I'm going to make this bird look exactly like me, but yeah. with wings. It's my head, but with wings. <laughs> but also, I can also turn into a bird with wings. Yeah, to confuse it's the viewer. It's not confusing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Who better to assist me than me? Yeah, that's right. That's true. I'm the only one I can rely on. And then I'm going to have a twin sister. <laughs> yeah. Not remin reminiscent of Wizard of Oz at all. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. But let's uh, let's dive in. I'm going to do my best uh, to kind of summarize and you guys just hop in as you see fit. But the movie's about she. Oh, by the way, the uh, I've never known this before, but the original title is uh, Sen to Chihiro no Kamakakushi. And I definitely didn't say that correctly, but that directly translates literally to Sen and Chihiro's spiriting away. And the oh. American title is spirited away. So I just think that's interesting to know. And wasn't this the highest grossing film in Japan for many, many, many years until Up I think until 2020? 2020? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 200 million um, before it even opened in the US. And it's like the longest, it's the first anime film to be nominated and win an Academy Award as well. Mm -hmm. It was the, it was the second. Um, anime, not animated. Yeah, yeah. Anime. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Anime. It was the second year that the animated what feature was like a category in the Oscars. Did you know what the first one was? The first ever Award winner of the Oscar for animated movie. Ooh, I I knew this bit of trivia at one point in my life. It uh, I'm trying to think of movies that came out around that time. Around two thousand. Yeah. Uh, it's up. <laughs> I don't know why I was like a bug's life. <laughs> it's, I would have accepted a bug's life. Like that's that's like a movie that you could think uh, of as being like a like really uh, ants. I see where I went wrong. It's ants with it a was, Z. It was Shrek. Shrek. Oh, that's donkey. right. Shrek. <laughs> donkey. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Lion King was the first to be nominated for best picture, right? Or is that wrong? Yeah, I think you're right. I think you could be right, but this was the first, it was the the animated movie away. category. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bang bang boom. Hands down, Miyazaki probably going to win again this year. Uh, Boy in the Heron, likely front runner. So got to see it. It's I haven't seen it yet either. Oh, but, but it's up against Across the Spider Verse, which will be interesting to see how that I, goes down. I do love Across the Spider Verse. Great movie. We saw that together. Selfishly, I wanted to win over Boy in the Heron. You I don't know. even know yet. 
Well, I, well, I said selfishly because we went to the premiere. So it's like, oh yeah, I, I went to a premiere for an award-winning movie. Oh, it makes you feel cooler that it's an award winner. Yeah. It makes, make my, my wee wee feel better. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> Prestige also makes my wee wee feel better. It's true. <laughs> I get it. Not bigger, just better. I'm just better. glad we all can agree that our wee wees need to feel a certain way. Yeah. We're all, we've had many experiences. We've talked about all sharing so far, you know, <laughs> growing up as a young woman and moving. Yeah. We all, wee wees. We all, everybody. <laughs> Flair, appreciating pro wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big fans of oh, all of yeah. us, big fans of wrestling here. Give me a couple cheeseburgers. <laughs> she just quote Stone Cold <laughs> ET. Yeah, it's the only thing I think of now. <laughs> I need to give me a couple cheeseburgers. So I could whip Vince McMahon's ass. <laughs> With the ET head. <laughs> Have you seen um, that, Carrie? We'll have to send it to I'll you. Send Every to time you. there's a new okay. guest, we send them Stone Cold ET. <laughs> <laughs> I just, love it already. I'm it's ready. just a guy in a McDonald's drive through wearing an E.T. mask. With like the hoodie up. And ordering food in Stone Cold Steve Austin's voice. And then the restaurant employee like, what is going on? <laughs> and it's awesome. Um, but anyway, yeah. Ten-year-old uh, Chihiro is how the movie opens. Her, her and her parents are moving to their new home. Uh, Chihiro is very whiny and unhappy about having to move. Uh, she gets a bouquet of flowers that her friend gave her as a goodbye gift and it's wilting. That's definitely not symbolism and um, a little gift card with her name on it too. I think it's to Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> and then they see their new house, but they notice that they've taken a wrong turn and the dad is like the quintessential stereotypical dad of yesteryear. I'm not going to ask for directions. This is Ted from Stranger Things. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, we can get there. This is a short. And then the wife's like, please don't take a shortcut. Just turn around. I'm, I'm, I'm begging I'm you. I'm begging you. Shut up, woman. And then they, they drive through the, the tunnel. The parents are um, shown very. I, I really like the portrayal of the parents. Like even when you do? Chihiro's in the back. Well, to me, it feels very real. Like, I think the mom's like kind of mean to Chihiro. I don't know if she's mean, like, at least with the, you know, as someone who watched the subs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Like the real tone of voice. Yeah, it's very important. Uh, but just know just the way that, because Kitcha Hero is sad, but she's being a little bratty. Like, oh, my, my flowers will ting. And the mom's kind of like, I'll just put in the bottle of water. Like just the way the mom was kind of half- Paying attention. Yeah, like, like she's worried about the new mortgage and yeah. like the meeting the movers on time. Kids are annoying. I've got two of them. Making I totally sure get this it. knucklehead in the driver's seat isn't going to get them lost. Mm -hmm. But there's part of me that was watching, you know, as a parent and was like, cheer or just fucking stay here then, dude. I don't know. We're going into the theme park. Like, it's just, it was like, that's not what, you know, like, you're making her leave all of her friends and stuff. Like, you could be more comforting. And why are you going to this theme park? That's a really bad idea. Like, I don't think this dude should know. be in charge of the family. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. This dude should be fired as family manager, the dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Per his, I smell food. Per his six month review. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll pay later. <laughs> well, here's what I, my take on this is that there, I hope is some sort of spell about the food because they go mm. through the, they, they, they drive to the tunnel, they get to mm. a, a, a a place where they can't drive anymore, a blockade. And then they sneak into this, like a, what appears to be an secret abandoned tunnel. Yeah, secret, tunnel. secret tunnel, what appears to be an abandoned theme park. And they're walking around. They see like an old river and stuff like that. And they see, they, they start to smell food. And the dad's like, Oh my God, I'm so fucking hungry. And then, so they just go looking for it. And like, the only way this makes sense is if there's some sort of like uh seduction in the smell of the food, like no normal person would be like, let me just go eat some random food that's sitting out in an abandoned yeah, place. They're right? piping in the smell of like McDonald's fries mm. in that air, aren't they? You think so? Yeah, maybe. Was that, would that do it for you? Uh, I, it's surprisingly low, the bar of food smells. <laughs> I like you have how to you went out. straight to McDonald's <laughs> fries. Hey, man, don't act like you're above <laughs> McDonald's. I haven't eaten McDonald's in a decade. <laughs> Crispy I've, chicken sandwich. I'm sorry maybe? for you. <laughs> My wife loves McDonald's and we fight about it all the time, like playfully. She'll call me like, <laughs> I'm in McDonald's because I'm not a fucking snob. <laughs> <laughs> she gets it. And I'm like, give me sushi. Kyrie, Kyrie, what's your thoughts on McDonald's? <laughs> I'm just thinking about Wendy's right now. Are you a Wendy's? Crispy chicken sandwich. Mm. You're, ready, you're, ready for the, you, you're ready for the surge pricing? <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a bad idea that is. I know. I, I was like, somebody said, uh, is there surge paying going on there? Like they get make more money per hour? For, no. <laughs> when it's busy? Dave Thomas is rolling in his grave. Paying the poor's more? Mm -mm. Ew. That's bad business. Ew. Well, 
<laughs> What's that movie where every time somebody says the word poor, the guy almost pukes? Oh, it's Wonka. Uh, Wonka. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I like that. Uh, That's a good movie. But the place gives Chihiro the creeps, right? So she's uh, like, guys, please, let's go back to the car the whole time. And they're like, shut up. We're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> We See, real life parents used to have an older sister. She whined too much. Keep talking. And we were hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Film theory, um, spirited away about cannibalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. They got spirited away to the by kitchen murder. <laughs> by murder. Uh, but yeah, like the food is delicious. Mom and dad are tearing it up. Nom, 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 nom. And actually, it, it does look good as somebody who loves the cuisine. That, Japan. Is, that is a Ghibli staple. Like all of the food looks good and almost all of it is food that Hayao Miyazaki has like personally made himself. <laughs> He's like, this is all my favorite foods. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't know what any of it is, but I want to eat all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Same. Yeah. All chickens. And by the way, the, the voice actor uh, who plays the mother, she was eating a piece of fried chicken while oh, delivering these the lines. Yes. The mouth sounds. And the uh, English voice actors for the dub did the same thing, but with an apple. So she was a little more of a coward. Mm, yeah. Because I think honking fried chicken while you're talking is way cooler than an apple. Do you think she could do that that thing with the chicken leg that the dude from My Cousin Vinny can do, where he just like puts the whole leg in his, in his mouth and just pulls it off the meat? I think one. she could. Yeah. I have never met her or seen her in my Chihiro. life. Chihiro! <laughs> Home! <laughs> just the whole turkey leg. Why not? Mm -hmm. uh, Renfest already. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the food's delicious. They're having a good time. She wanders off while they're eating. Uh, and then she sees this like ornate building in the background. It's the bathhouse. Uh, I like how the synopsis I'm looking at says a spa resort for, <laughs> for the Americans. We get it. Yeah. They take baths there. Um, that was a thing that uh, was, was it John Lasseter that was in charge of the, the importing this to America? Mm -hmm. Like he, they actually added a line of someone saying like what a bathhouse like, was. Oh, it's a bathhouse. Yeah. Because they were worried that American audiences would be like, so is it a, is it a brothel? Is it a brothel? <laughs> <laughs> really? Are they making the American a brothel? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on there? I love that our culture is such that they're like. We're such sex pests. The only analog they're going to be able to think of is that everybody's in there paying to fuck. I, and if you see some of the spirits in there, they're definitely fucking. <laughs> At least getting happy endings. I'm just saying it. <laughs> that radish spirit's that, like, got something going on. Yeah, the on. radish spirit. Mm -hmm. Is that the one with that like, the, the whisker? Yes. It's a radish. Like in the, oh, I didn't pick up on that. I was calling a mustache man in my I nose. love that Steve <laughs> keeps asking which one is the radish spirit. And every time I think the one that looks like a fucking radish. <laughs> Or no, but then earlier, ironically, we just, just had a guy a, from the uh, last airbender, like my radishes. <laughs> we had a veggie tray earlier and Steve was like, what are those? And Erica said, those are radishes. So maybe you just don't know what they look like. Things I can, things that I cannot perceive a radishes B. If a sunset is a sunset or a sunrise, these are well known <laughs> things about me. <laughs> It was funny, though, because when I had mentioned like, oh, you know, it's the one with the nipples, you knew immediately who oh, I was talking about. I was like, oh, nips? <laughs> oh, nips. Oh, the nipple one. Okay. <laughs> that guy. Uh, but while wandering away from her parents, she meets a boy. Um, and he boy. is alarmed to see her. Tells her, he's like, get the fuck out. <laughs> get across the river. <laughs> Hurry up before it gets dark. Steve didn't know if it was getting dark or the sun was rising. <laughs> yeah, I was he like, just is said. it morning? <laughs> Uh, and so Chihiro runs back to her parents and they're still eating. And now they've turned into pigs. That's Ooh, what pigs do. That's that was a good pig. Mm -hmm. It's like you, a pig wallowed in here. You can do a pig thing. Yeah, it's decent. Can you do the squeak? The, the pig squeak? Probably my pig nose that makes me do that really well. <laughs> <laughs> can I Oh, like the bleeding? Yeah. Like, yeah. No. Yeah, I can't weak, do that. Weak, weak. Squee. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> Squee. Squee. <laughs> uh, and then all of a sudden, like, ghostly figures start appearing in all the shops and streets, and it scares the shit out of you. I love hero. that effect of just these ghostly figures just kind of like, oh, time to go shopping. Like, it's just, I like how mundane the spirit world is, because even though there's all these spirits. They still like carry luggage and they're like seemingly go to work and still kind of wait in line. It kind of makes you bummed about the afterlife. Cause you're like, fuck, I got to wait in a line. That sucks. Do I have to worry about my spirit? For a long K? They have to have, <laughs> they have to have money. Yeah. And they have to still 
bathe? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I don't, don't mind I don't a wanna, bath. I don't want to bathe in heaven. I don't want to be stinky. <laughs> unless it's for fun. Uh, wait, what does that even mean? <laughs> unless it's requested, you know? <laughs> Go on. I don't know why I said that. Unless it's for fun. I have regrets. Um, so I really do think they were lured in there, though. I, I was thinking about this earlier. Because like the wind, when they're in the tunnel and she's trying not to go in, it's like. Oh, it's like sucking. Oh, yeah. Even, yeah. Uh, you know, because wind does that kind of thing. Mm. And then that's what pigs do. Yeah. Okay. And as long as we're on the same, like. What do dragons do? Rawr. Huh. Rawr XD. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting on my treasure. I am Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, you went with a snow. <laughs> that was yeah. spot on. Yeah. Now, I'm not a scientist, but I think that. Um, them eating all the food, being greedy, one might say, and then turning into pigs. Mm. I think that might be one of them, one of them symbolisms. Mm. Mm. One of them symbolisms. One of, symbolisms. One I heard of about? symbolisms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think so. Oh shoot! I don't, I don't think, probably I don't think that holds any water. I'm, I'm reading too much into it. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. Don't be so woke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so she's terrified. She sees all these ghosts and shit. She runs back to the river, which was barely a, a trickle of a stream before now it's a raging river um she doesn't even, she doesn't even recognize <laughs> right she the dying of the light <laughs> she doesn't even recognize the buildings that are across the, uh, the other side of the river anymore everything's scary and new and then a fucking boat shows up and uh she starts disappearing oh no oh no what would what do you think would happen if he, if if haku did, didn't save her did someone get in a delorean and go back in time and she's slowly disappearing because the future's not set biff no biff no don't bet on the sports Maybe. <laughs> well, what would happen if she had disappeared completely, just like ceased to exist or just be invisible in the spirit world for her whole life? Yeah. Does she like, is she just trying, is she going back to the normal world? And No, that would be, what if he stopped her from just going home? Wait, don't go home. <laughs> Eat this. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Bait trap. <laughs> um, she got catfished by Haku. <laughs> it was acid. She was coming down. He was like, Eat this. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, the riverboat lands, a bunch of people come out um, and other ghosts and shit, radishes, if you will, mm -hmm. radish eye. And uh, she thinks she's dreaming, but can't wake up. And Haku, the boy who turned her away, finds her and makes her eat the food. So she'll stay in this world instead of fading away. He assures her that she will not turn into a pig, which is good news because she's worried about that. She's like, no, I don't want to eat because she's not greedy. She just takes one little nibble, mm -hmm. a normal amount, a grape. Uh, she becomes solid again. And then he's like, come with me, right? The bird with the woman's head, Steve loves, flies above them. And he hides her, hides her saying that the bird's looking for her. And they sneak through a bunch of alleys and and, and they go through a pig barn. That's clutch because she knows her parents are pigs. And they go up to the big bathhouse, uh, right to the bridge. He tells her that he needs, she needs to hold her breath as she crosses the bridge or the spirits will see her as a human, right? Am I getting that correctly? Mm -hmm. I th yeah, I think you're on it. And uh, she makes it almost all the way across the bridge, but then a frog speaks to Haku hey. and scares her. Hey, pretty much. That's all hey, I Haku. Haku. <laughs> Haku. And, uh, Do you like my, sh my shirt? I, lo I love his little outfit. <laughs> his little frog outfit. Just a little guy. He's like a little fancy boy. Fancy boy. He <laughs> fancy and frog is fancy. Fancy boy, yeah. True. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <a> rib it. <laughs> and luckily the frog... Uh, barely sees her, but Haku like makes him a bubble boy, not the Jake <laughs> yeah. Hall movie, but like <laughs> turn, puts a bubble around him. Yeah. 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 I like how he's just like, fuck. Uh, <laughs> well, that's just ruined my whole day. <laughs> Haku. Fuck you. This poor frog. He gets bubbled and eaten. And what mm -hmm. did he do to anybody? He's just he, a fancy little boy trying to live his best life. I think he's a snitch and Haku knows they get stitches. <laughs> oh, these prison rules in the bathhouse. <laughs> That's right. Snitches get bubbled. Um, <laughs> doesn't work as well. Uh, but Haku tells her very, he's like, oh, here's what you got to do. You, you, I like how he's supportive too. She's like, I'm sorry, I fucked it up. He's like, no, you did great. You fucking crushed it for real. I didn't think you were going to hold your breath that long. Yeah, that was great. I, I ain't going to lie. None of this is even real. You're not in any danger. I'm having fun. I'm bored. It's Bubble Boy's fault. <laughs> but he tells her to go find Kamaji, ask for a job. He's the boiler man. And if you get a job here, this is a very capitalistic society, the bathhouse, as we discussed earlier off air. If you get a job, no one will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, right? Yeah. Um, Your that, options are be eaten as a pig or work. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. Not cool, Miyazaki. Um, 
So yeah, she's got to have a job to stay there. You can either be a capitalist or a capitalist pig. Ooh. Yep. One of my favorite quotes from Porco Rosso was, I'd rather be a pig than a fascist. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm just so a pig. If, for, for no other reason, you should watch that because of that quote. That does sound like a fire ass quote. Also, I will recommend that you watch the dub version of Porco Rosso because Michael Keaton is Porco Rosso. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so it's just Michael <laughs> Pete Keaton. I'm just a pig. What are you, nuts? <laughs> you want to get nuts? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Let's get nuts. <laughs> um, so Yubaba will turn her into an animal if she does not get a job. So what animal? Like, Here's the thing. Everyone's like, ah, everyone's going to know you're a human. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are several humans in this bathhouse, right? Like, Um, uh, no, uh, uh, I don't know what Lynn is. I don't know what Lynn Lynn looks like a human. She looks like a human. It looks like this bathhouse is just worked by either Lynn, Chihiro, Yubaba, frog dudes, Mm -hmm. smaller frog dudes, or other women who aren't Lynn. (laughs) Yeah, there's like that sleepy girl who's like, shut that little dude up. Yeah. And Lynn's like, she's scared. Uh, <laughs> leave her alone. I don't know. I don't. I didn't get the vibe that they were human. Did you get the vibe that they were human? They are humanoid. And Correct. They, they certainly look human. But with how racist they are against humans, mm-hmm. um, probably probably not. So I think they're is... like David from Alien Promethe- like Prometheus. Oh, uh, okay. The Michael Fassbender they're guy. Ro- they're robots. They're androids. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or are they aliens like from the Marvel Cinematic Universe where they're just humans? They're just like, oh, you're from Planet Gleepcore, but oh, like you um, look like a, just a, you're just a normal human. The crawl, like John C. Riley, crawl, <laughs> John C. Riley in Guardians of the Galaxy or whatever. Oh, like that's yeah. just John C. Riley, but oh, he's not a human. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. whatever. Okay, but a spirit version of that, not an alien. Oh, I like a spirit version of John C. Riley. <laughs> you are the spirit of John C. Riley. <sighs> Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> so Haku also tells her. Uh, that he knows her. He's like, dude, are we, are we just friends? I, I know your, he, he knows her name. He knows that her name's Chihiro. You told me your name a long time ago. And she almost forgot it too. She's like, oh my God, thank you. Said, thankfully you said Chihiro. Cause I forgot what I, what my name is. Uh, and he says he's known her since she was very small. And we kind of just leave it at that. My, f- one of my favorite parts of this movie is such a tiny moment. And it's this scene where she goes down the extremely steep wooden staircase uh, I laugh every time where she's like, oh, yeah, because they really make a meal of it. Where She's going so slowly. And you're you're thinking to yourself, this is going to take forever because there's like 900 steps. And she's just going like one every 12 it's, uh, seconds. And then one breaks and she gets scared and goes, ah, <laughs> just runs really fast down all of them. It makes I belly laugh every time. <laughs> And I wanted to see if you guys felt the same way. It seems like you do. It was so, cute. So it makes you feel relatable. better. Mm-hmm. And then she hits the wall. Kind of a Looney Tunes moment, but it's good. We've all done that. We've all been there. Yeah. Uh, she goes in there and finds Kumaji and the boiler room. And there's like a, <laughs> there's a really weird setup in there. The boiler is like fed by like little spider type creatures who are what, delivering what, what, coal. What do you call them, Kyrie? They're soot sprites. Soot, soot sprites. sprites. Mm-hmm. Soot. Not suit. Oh, suit sprites are different. Those are just like three-piece suits walking around. <laughs> it's a bit, a bit further up the corporate ladder. Yeah, with higher the, up on the corporate ladder. With the tails. <laughs> yeah. Hello. So what, so what is, uh, his name is Kam- Kamanji? Mm-hmm. Kamaji. What does Kamaji do? He's the boiler man. What does the boiler man do? So it looks like when we first see him that he's working on some sort of concoction. And later on, um, when she and Lynn are cleaning out one of the big tubs, they have to request an herbal soak. So presumably he's the guy who directs all the water, creates all the concoctions for the different bath because different spirits will need different things. Like I think the radish spirit needs a sulfur bath is what they say in the, in the dub version anyway. It's for the nips. Mm-hmm. And of course he's got a, <laughs> it's exactly. <laughs> Can't have cold nips. Come on. No. And then um, I think he's also kind of the foreman of the soot sprites too. Okay. Yeah, he's the one that cast the spell on them mm-hmm. to have them be workers, which is why he says he doesn't need to hire her. I've got uh, my own slave labor right here. Exactly. And, and so he's <laughs> he's in charge of that whole area and like all of the different herbal. And if you notice it's, earlier when she comes down and brings Haku when he's injured, he freaks out and hits the wall and all these leaves fly out. So it's like that's where all the herbs are, too. So like he mm. mixes them, you know, uh, he's such an interesting design because he's just he looks like Dr. Robotnik yeah. crossed with a spider. And it, it's kind of horrifying. But as the movie goes on, you're like, oh, I like this guy. He's a good egg. He's a good egg. And like, he's, yeah, he's a super good guy out of nowhere, even though he's like scary as fuck. Like if I was a kid, 
I'd be like, holy shit. And he drinks his tea straight out of the kettle. Baller Monster. move. Baller move. Right after, did it just whistle though, or is it had been sitting there a while? Oh, I honestly, I didn't, I didn't clock if it had just whistled, but I just saw him like go right out of the spout, mouth yeah. the spout. <laughs> He's a spout man. I do yeah. that with my Brita filter in the fridge. <laughs> you monster. You know the pitcher? Yeah. Yeah. I just, blah, 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 blah. Absolute psychopath. I'm you thirsty. It's just me and my wife. Ah, uh, you know. I like when she protests about stuff like that too. You know, it's like, oh, now we're. Oh, now we can't That's swap fluids. That's now, where we're drawing the line. Yeah, now we're shy about we my mouth. We have a child together. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't draw the line way earlier, I feel like. Um, <laughs> <never mind. laughs> but um, yeah, so all the soot balls are like, there's like a weird weirdness to their spell. Uh, the soot sprites, you know, he says, what if they don't, if they don't keep working, the spell will wear off. Is that what mm -hmm. he says? Eventually she convinces him to work for her, right? Is that what happens? Mm, so uh, eventually they get interrupted when Lynn comes in to drop off some food. And then um, immediately Lynn's like, oh my gosh, a human. And You're then, the human everyone's looking for. And then he immediately, even though up until this point, he's very just like, I don't need you. Get out of here. You're useless. You're, you're distracting my workers. Um, he immediately is like, oh, she's my granddaughter. Mm. Also, he says to take her to Yubaba. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it kind of like helps her out there. Oh, yeah. But I definitely don't want you to work here. I'm not going to be more clear about that. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want you to die and turn into a pig or anything. But like, what you be? You're you're a, you're a pill. I don't you want you in here. Soots? You're a real hanger on around here. That's not gonna. I do love the little comedy of her. The, like the the soot sprites are like, you know, they're walking. They're in their 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 mode, but they can't like just conceive about walking around her like she's in their way and she's like I'm I'm sorry and just the way she's trying to get around them and then eventually she has to throw uh, a piece of coal that seems to weigh 90 pounds into the boiler because mm -hmm. she's one of them get crushed yeah gotta help a little and guy then, out. and then the next one's like ooh me too yeah. <laughs> I am also crushed she makes them all lazy <laughs> it's kind of amazing um, that's what yeah. happens when capitalism breaks down guys mm -hmm. everyone gets lazy but Lynn, <laughs> that's actually that's why there's a late stage. It's late stage laziness, obviously. Yeah, yeah obvi, obvi. So it's the it's the proletariat fucking everything up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, <laughs> but Lynn only agrees to help because Kamanji offers her a roasted newt. Have either of you ever had a roasted newt? It's been some time. I don't know. Uh, does the day end with a Y? Then yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. She turned it's me, a new time, baby. <laughs> she turned me into a newt. I got roasted. I got better. <laughs> Thank you for trying to switch it up there. I appreciate it. You're though. welcome. <laughs> uh, but she's got to leave her shoes and socks in the boiler room because they stanky. Oh, my God. Later on when they're walking through the, the bathhouse and there's this one dude that like kind of gives Lynn some shit. And she's like, well, I got this roasted newt. Is that shit like Molly or something? Because that dude's like, God, I fucking want that. Give me that. Give me that roasted newt. I want it so bad. We don't know what effects a roasted newt has on you in the spirit world, but we can only assume from context that it's akin to fentanyl. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I need it. <laughs> There's a roasted newt crisis sweeping this bathhouse. <laughs> <laughs> People are giving roasted newts to kids on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Your grandparents need to be scared. The sulfur is like Narcan. That's why they put it in the. <laughs> that's why they put it in the baths. <laughs> oh my god! They take three elevators to Yubaba's area on the top floor, and they see a bunch of like crazy bathhouse clients on the way. Uh, one of them is the radish spirit with the nipples, and um, an elevator operator who hasn't spotted Jihiro uh, <laughs> tells Lynn she smells like a human. So apparently, humans have this odor. I'm assuming it's pleasant as a human. <laughs> they react but, very positively. So but yeah, that's when yeah. she distracts him with the roasted newt. He's like, Oh, give me that. That's so my left nut for a newt. <laughs> <laughs> give some of that sweet, sweet newt. <laughs> they, uh, I love butt chugging newts. <laughs> they Get arrive. muted. Yeah. Get Ooh. Neuter. Ooh. There's a lot of, it's a newt bathhouse. That's <laughs> live nudes. <laughs> Send me your nudes. <laughs> Send nudes. <laughs> Kamaji's like <laughs> nudes. Kamaji's got the hook up. Oh, oh, sorry. Only nudes. <laughs> yeah. This episode was sponsored by BetterHelp. 
folks, it's 2024. What does everybody do in the new year? They make resolutions. They set goals. How about we don't do that? I mean, you can. It's obviously nice to have goals, but it's also a good exercise to focus on things that you like about yourself. You know, not making all those high pressure goals that you might fail at and just feel worse. You can set smaller goals. And I think therapy can be a good way to access things that you enjoy about your life and focusing on the positive, the gratitude. And BetterHelp is a good way to do that. If you've never given BetterHelp a try, it's therapy that's entirely online. You can do it all from your home and access a therapist by filling out a questionnaire. And if you end up not liking that therapist, you can switch. Again, along with the theme of this ad, uh, no pressure whatsoever. They're not going to have their feelings hurt by it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash streaming things today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash streaming things. Spring is just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So how about we spring into action and give a special shout out to all of the patrons who keep the lights on over here at Streaming Things. And I want to give a special shout out to our super patrons for the month of March. Thank you. Stanton Valentino, Maddlestat, Bryce Coppin, Susie Callahan, Anthony Corona, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Ashley Hazen, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Svento. Seven, Jay Scramo, Bluff Pum, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Jason Hawkins, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Road, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting Streaming Things and let's get back to the show. They go to uh, this giant ass fucking office. The, the door knocker talks to her. And there's something that's very like um, C.S. Lewis about this. You know, mm. there's some Alice in Wonderlandy vibes. C.S. Lewis, write that. Which one is that? Al- oh. Lewis Carroll. Mm, there you go. Different Lewis. But also yeah. Narnia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, the door knocker talks to her. The knocker is really crazy. He's like, you're the pathetic little girl. He's like talking hella crazy. Um, but then it's, it's like Yubaba talking through the knocker. Yubaba's like kind of un- omnipotent at this bathhouse. There's a lot of shit happens at once, right? There's like all the disembodied green heads, which we, we can't explain. I don't think. What is your, what is your take on the heads? There are three of them. <laughs> we just accept the heads, green. right? Yeah. I think they're the fates. <laughs> what do they say? Are they saying hi? Hi. Hello. Hello. Or why are they Bernie Sanders? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm once again asking you. I'm been... once again asking you to put my other two heads on top of my head <laughs> so that I can walk into Congress and demand change. <laughs> we have to... this bathhouse. Capitalism gone rampant. It's gone rampant. The one percent. You bop the you of the world. <laughs> They're keep, keep, keeping us down. A roaster do in every pot. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I vote for you. <laughs> That's the change I want to see in the world. Yeah. Yep. yep. It's for everyone. But she eventually uh, meets Yubaba and it's an old woman with a huge head. Uh, so, so I'm surprised we didn't go into this before we started recording. Kyrie started this sort of bit where we would name a character from Spirited Away and Kyrie would say smash your pass. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how do you feel about you, you Baba, smash your pants? Oh, uh, smash. Uh, you just say smash every time. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. I have needs. <laughs> First and new. But no, when we were when we were jokingly doing the smash or pass, the 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 three headed dudes provided the the most fun like conversation. Mm-hmm. Like And would. So do you sack. smash one of them and the other two are watching the whole time? Or do they do like a three Muppets in a trench coat <laughs> deal and all at once? And then I mimed what I would do. <laughs> do it again. I won't. Do it again. I, I won't. You coward. I regretted doing it the first do time. It, do it. <laughs> you know, get one of those. <laughs> Love it. Pull some more. And then back up. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <saw. laughs> Whole new meaning to getting some head. <laughs> you know? Yeah, getting some heads. <laughs> Annie Hoozle, back to the children's movie. Uh, 
<laughs> Jiro's 10. When I'm watching this for the first time, every time, it, I don't feel like I'm cognizant of how big Yubaba's head is until she angrily runs up to Chihiro. Horrifying. You know what I mean? Like behind the desk, you're like, oh, the art direct, the art of this woman is like just interesting. You know, her proportions don't kind of. And then when she's like, oh, and you're like, oh, my God. Her eye is as big as Chihiro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. But her body's like normal. Yeah. It's wild. Um, Chihiro keeps asking for a job. You is like, no, nah, I'm not hiring anybody right now. What, your resume sucks. You're a lazy, stupid crybaby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She keeps talking hella shit about her, making disparaging remarks. Uh, makes her silence her with magic and then starts smoking a cigarette as you do. Right. So just corporate America then. right? Indeed. Very much big business being represented here. Um, she tries to find out who helped Chihiro, but Chihiro will not snitch on Haku because she saw what happened to the frog. I'm not trying to get bubbled. I ain't no snitch. That's all. I, that's all we can safely assume. And Chihiro keeps persisting. And then she says, maybe I'll give you the most difficult job I've got and work you until you breathe your very last breath, which is what, capitalism does <laughs> <laughs> uh but then her enormous baby Bo, Bo, is it Bo? yeah mm -hmm. Bo. uh busts in wakes Jiro. up and yubaba's really upset that jihiro woke him but that's when jihiro finally like sees her out her way to manipulate yubaba and she's like i'm gonna stay here and keep waking up with the fucking baby until you give me a job right so she gives her a contract um and apparently we, we find out a bit of like world lore that she she gave an oath that she would give a job to anyone who asked which why don't can we take her at face value with that with her huge face <laughs> um, uh, i mean she does give her a job that's what she says right um and then she said that well go ahead sign your name away yeah chihiro has a very pretty name and she magically lifts all but one of the letters which i, I think if we could read the characters it might be some more context for us there but since mm -hmm. we can't we're just like oh that one <laughs> um says that her name belongs to her now um and i guess the one character left is just sen uh so, so from now on your name is sen and then haku comes in pretends not to know her and she is really offended and he says show her what to do take her around town you know um and you have to address him as master haku none of the workers want to take shahiro or sen into their department mm -hmm. complaining that she smells bad stinky human and Haku says that her smell will be gone after three days of eating their food. And uh, he uh, assigns Chihiro to work with Len. Oh, she smells like Axe body spray. <laughs> <laughs> and because Len had been asking for an assistant and Lynn's also like the nice one, right? Um, even though she is a roasted newt addict, but we're not going to hold that against her. It's a disease. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Len takes uh, Chihiro to her room where they... They share it with several others. It gives her the clothes that she's going to need, a blue apron and a pink shirt and pants. And then... Uh, blue apron, the sponsor of this video. <laughs> 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 Subscribe to kids, only newts. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Chihiro asks if there are two Hakus, because that one was really fucking mean. Lynn says, definitely not. He's just a dick. And uh, he's Yubaba's apprentice. Mm, and she, she's got to be careful what she says around Haku because, yep, he's Yubaba's henchman. And then that makes Chihiro very sick. Like, oh, no. Because she's thinking in that moment, like, he tricked me. Like, yeah. I don't know he was working for Yubaba the whole time. Probably didn't have to eat that grape. Probably didn't have to talk to Kamaji. Mm -hmm. This is all, this is all fucked. And, uh, and then Yubaba, as she does, turns into a bird with a human head, even though she's already got a bird with her head in her employ. That joins her. In this tra in these travels, she gets lonely. You know? It's our mini me. If I had a bird body in a head and was flying around, I'd want another of me with a bird body to keep me company. Well, it's kind actually of like I would make it with Steve's head and be like my little Stevie bird. <laughs> hey, <Daddy. laughs> want to go for a flight? Go it'd get be some like, newts. That'd be like if I was hanging at my house and I'm like, I'm gonna put my head on Pippin's body. <laughs> Daddy, I want to go out. Mm -hmm. It's just weird coming from my face, but yes, I will take you out, my child. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you not have matching shirts with your dog's head on your shirt and it's, then your I'm head literally on? wearing a Pippin <laughs> shirt right now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Does Pippin not have a shirt with your face on it? Oh, oh I should get him one. A little doggy shirt with Daddy's face. Daddy, Dad, Daddy's <laughs> favorite boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ellie with no clothes ever. No. <laughs> That you're, rat you're lucky I feed you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd love to bean. Yeah. Uh, so Chihiro sleeps in her new room, and then Haku's voice says, Meet me at the bridge. I'll take you to your parents. Um, so They're put, pigs. 
<laughs> Take, she puts on her new clothes, goes down to the boiler room where she left her shoes. And then she sees that her shoes are gone. <gasps> ah, but then the soot sprites bring, uh, bring them out of the tunnels where they live. We clean them. They're Pippin's voice for sure. Yeah, they are for sure. Your shoes were stinky, but we sorted them up. We washed them <laughs> up. Is that, isn't that Pippin's voice? Yeah. That is Pippin's voice. Yeah. Yeah. This is how he talks. He's a little British boy. <laughs> He's kind of like a, a doped up Michael Caine at a higher <laughs> octave. And that's Pippin. So then she goes out to the bridge. There's a fucking semi-transparent spirit there with a white mask <gasps> and a black robe. <gasps> it silently watches her cross. Uh, it was standing in the same spot in the middle of the bridge when she crossed the night before. It's a uh, creeper. It's what we call a creeper. Mm. It's always there just staring. Haku. Don't they give it, a, like, isn't it a type of spirit? Like, isn't there a, at one point you bop us like, oh no, she let a blank in here. Like, it's the type of spirit he is. They mm -hmm. just call it a no face. Oh, it's just a no face. Real okay. name they You're give thinking it. of the stink spirit because they initially think uh, the river spirit is a stink spirit. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Um, and he, anyway, he leads her through like the shrubs to the piggery. <laughs> and uh, he says, never come here without me, but also uh, remember which ones are your parents. It's going to be super important. And she's like, oh, okay. But they look all the same to us. So it's like, oh shit. Right. Then he gives she's her back. She's got pig blindness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gives her back her old clothes and says, hide these. You're going to need these to escape. And there's a little card in there, luckily with a real name, Chihiro. Uh, which she had almost forgotten because um, she had called herself Sen when she spoke to her parents. Haku says uh, that Yubaba exerts power over people by stealing their names. He was was lured there by her. He doesn't remember his own name. And he gives her some stuff to eat, which she doesn't want. It looks really delicious. Some kind of rice thing. It's a little rice ball. Oh, it looks so good. Mm -hmm. You ever have like a really sticky rice ball? Oh, yeah. Erica <sighs> made some a couple weeks ago. They were oh, fire. She'd be cooking mm -hmm. rice balls. Yeah, she made some rice balls. They were dope. <sighs> I want one. Uh, there's a Hawaiian place in Covington. Have you guys been there? Mm -mm. No, we're, which, what's it's it? The old, it used to be called De Felice. Oh, okay. Fancy yeah. restaurant yeah. Ac across from Shea Nora, which is now the steakhouse Lisay. Uh, but it's a, a really good Hawaiian place. It used to be across from my house and they mm. moved. Fucking love it. It's got Kahlua pork and all kinds of, but they oh. make these like really good sticky rice balls. I'm like, no, no, no. Ooh, I know what I'm doing this week. <laughs> yeah, baby. Did you have to bring your own parents for the pork or is it, <laughs> do they have some on, step, on, on site? They'll take anybody's parents. <laughs> you don't have to prove descendancy <laughs> or anything. Parents just don't understand. <laughs> I just grab somebody off the street. Let me show you this place. <laughs> um, so the rice balls is people. <laughs> <laughs> But he tells her you put a spell on it that'll give her more like energy. And she's like, no, 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 that's true. Oh, she turns into the Hulk, um, <laughs> metaphorically. Uh, but Haku has to go. He leaves her at the bridge. And then uh, she sees a dragon flying away and realizes that the dragon must be Haku. Uh, and then Kamaji finds uh, Chihiro asleep on the floor of the boiler room and covers her up because he's such a, actually a nice guy. What a G. But the, the Yubaba bird and her little Yubaba bird uh, they're flying through the heavy rain. Uh, Lynn's asking Chihiro where she's been. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. And she's like, oh, I gave you a job. You're making me look bad. You're never going to get a raise. Something like that. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> they get the taxes. <laughs> How they have to wash the floor is wild. Like, it's just like they put the rag down. Oh, they're just and running run. across. Like, yeah. Do they not mop? They're doing, uh, 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 what do you call those? Uh, sprints. Stair climber kind of things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> be a crazy workout. But as she's dumping her dirty water out the garden door, she sees that creepy spirit standing there in the rain. And she's eh. like, oh, I'll just leave the door open. You're just out there getting wet, dude. Come and on in. Eh. Okay. <laughs> I'm wet. And then they, they go to this. <laughs> they go to this big He was tub. in the rain. I get it. <laughs> he was getting wet. I know. I know what you're saying. They discover this big crusty tub that's going to need to be soaked. Soak them. Uh, soak them. Before clean this clean tub. It. No, that's frog's work. Ugh. Oh, the frog, the one frog. Mm -hmm. Lynn is super not. Well, all the dudes are those big toads, big toad frog people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I still feel like it's prejudice what she's saying. Oh, it's very prejudiced. Yeah. Like, make the stinky toads do it. <laughs> but she asks, uh, she tells uh, Chihiro to go get an herbal soap token. And I love, she's like, go to the foreman. And I love that Chihiro's like, okay, got it. 
what's a foreman? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you're training somebody at your job, you're like, fuck, you have no base knowledge on which to operate. This is going to mm -hmm. take forever. Um, but yeah, anyway, Yubaba senses that something's approaching. Uh oh. She looks out and wonders who's slinking around in the rain. And there's a giant spirit that looks like a big old pile of shit making its way toward the bathhouse. And like the, the animation here is so effective. It looks mm. so putrid and disgusting. Very viscous. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like leaving the slime trail. Everybody can smell it. It looks like me when I get home on Monday nights. <laughs> yeah. But Tuesday you're put here together. I, here I come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to really draw a nice bath on this one. I hope I got a bath bomb. Come here, Pippin. I hope she made some rice balls. Daddy, you smell amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the foreman will not give Sen a, a, a soap token. He's a real dick about it. But luckily, the no face guy uh, like, uh -huh, and like just gives her one. He's like, hey. Uh, <laughs> and they fill the big tub to soak. And I like how the remember we saw earlier what it looks like in the bowels of this bathhouse. Like when she's yanks that it's going down to Kamaji, who's making up the herbal the concoction. Stuff. Yeah. Sending it back up with hot water. He's also he's heating the water and he's putting the herbs in it. Mm -hmm. Herbs. The herb man. He's got the newt connect. Yeah. So the newt connect. <laughs> That's true. He's got all, he's the, he's the guy. Where's my newt plug at? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, the way that it fills everything. It's all really well done. And then no face comes up eh, eh, as if he's trying to talk. Uh, but he's got like a bunch of tokens. Now he's like, you like these? <laughs> She's like, I don't need those. Uh, but luckily she does need them later, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but she turns them down. He gets super disappointed. He's like, ah, just drops them. Fuck you then. So uh, what is No Face's, you know, why does he love her so much? Is it just because she was the only one that was kind enough to A, see him, but then B, just let him in? So mm -hmm. I think that's the vibe, yeah. He just he's just lonely, lonely. and with a buddy. He, yeah, he represents loneliness and, and she was the only one who like noticed that he was a thing to begin with, but also he was also just kind to him. Mm. Yeah. So, so and, and you'll see like throughout um as we continue on, No Face keeps trying to do things that he thinks that Chihiro will like him for. So like when he notices Chihiro talking to the other frogs or whatever, then of course he swallows up the frogs and he's trying to, you know, sh shower everybody with this gold because he thinks it'll make him more popular or make it make himself less lonely, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously none of that really works on her. And I think that's what kind of drives him crazy. Yeah. Again, he tries to give capitalism. her so much, so mm -hmm. much gold. She's like, I don't need it. Thanks though. I'm going to hurry. She is basically the Jenny to no faces Forrest Gump. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's the first one to be like, you can sit here if you want to. Oh, okay. Everyone yeah. everyone else in that bathhouse was like, sleep's taken. Yeah. I may not be a smart man, but I know what an herbal soak is. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that was really good. That's all I know about that. <laughs> Kit does a great Forrest Gump. Unfortunately, it's in my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great pocket talent to have. Yeah, just bust. The, you know, people don't appreciate it as much as you would think. One time I was at a wedding. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And my wife was like disgusted because I can imagine how much I do this at home. But it was like a bunch of people I didn't know. And it was like, I'm searching for an icebreaker. And I just thumb and finger point down and go. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead silent. Everybody's being awkward. And I go and they have these, these like gaudy groomsmen shoes on, you know. And so I just go, those look like comfortable shoes. <laughs> And they look at me. I bet you could walk around all day and choose like that and not get tired. And not feel a thing. <laughs> and she's just like, and oh they all my walk, they God. all just walk away from you. <laughs> Honestly, I got a couple good chuckles. And then I was like, see, you're wrong. That's an awesome thing to do. And then her dad, who's also heard me do that a bunch, was like, it would be funnier if you didn't do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Tough crowd. It's better the first time for sure mm -hmm. than every other day. But anyway. You should try busting that out sometime if, as an icebreaker. Those look like comfortable shoes. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Next time I see someone with good shoes. Yeah, do it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, so he gives her all the tokens. She doesn't want them. He's, but the big tub's like overflowing. It's craziness. You Baba has identified the big fucking shit pile as a stink spirit. She's stink, like, that's a stink, stink spirit. spirit. Oh, God. Um, and, but, but she's kind of suspicious that he might not really be a stink spirit. How'd they get my nickname from high school? Exactly. 
Steve Stink Spirit May. It was, yep. a, it was a superlative that he got. He was Stink Spirit. Give me your lunch money. <laughs> because his school spirit was shitty. You know what I mean? He had none. Uh, yeah. I call him Stink Spirit. Yeah. Public schools. <laughs> you, you get it. I get it. Uh, but the staff's trying to like ward the thing off, but it keeps just barreling through them. And then so finally, Ubaba is kind of like, ah, I fucking hate the human. So punishes. Uh, sin by assigning her to take him to the big tub and bathe him. Um, and she can hardly speak because he smells so bad, but she's like, all right, I got to do it, I guess. And, and there's, you can see like the purple pustules popping on him and shit. It's, it's wild. I love the way that they animate the, the shiver that goes up her spine and you can see her mm -hmm. hair all frizz. I just love the way they animate that. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> Then he gets and sits in the big hot tub, which honestly, as a shit pile myself, looks amazing. <laughs> that tub does look so good. You know what I mean? Uh, and then Yubaba and everybody's watching as she tries to clean this thing. Uh, and then she has all those extra herbal soap tokens, luckily, because the water's already dirty. And that's how oh, she's able soap. to- soap. Yeah. So she's able to send those things up and get like a bunch of cleansing hot water. Uh, but like Len finally arrives to help, but- Chihiro falls in the bath and it's disgusting. You notice the spirit like helps her like because she's stuck upside down in the sludge and he, mm -hmm. like picks her up and then she sees a, a handle poking out there. It looks like a, a thorn. She calls it, starts yanking on it, tells everybody there's a thorn in here. Uh, and then like all of a sudden Yubaba's like, I know it's probably a bicycle and a, <laughs> and a spirit. <laughs> so she wraps it up with rope and has the entire building full of workers yank on this thing. And yeah, it was a bicycle the whole time and all this garbage. Oh, bicycle. Bicycle. <laughs> that would have been great needle drop. Yeah, what? I want to ride my bicycle. Um, yeah, and all this shit comes out, and then it turns into like it's a guardian of the great river. It's like a fucking dragon, right? It's a, it's an old. It's with like an old man face. He's like, ah, sorry, I got so nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a stinky boy. <laughs> I thought this was a whorehouse. Just a dirty old man. <laughs> yeah, just a dirty, dirty old man. Old man. You guys want to come into my river? <laughs> oh, what? I'm a river spirit. You want to you want to you want to come into my river? No. You want to see my bins? Put your put your toes in. <laughs> I got roasted newts back in my house. You guys want to party? It's getting progressively more old, Greg. <laughs> come on, Greg. Come on, Greg. <laughs> oh, Greg. <laughs> ah, but he's got nice shaggy eyebrows. That's cool. He explodes out of the tub, and. uh because he does resemble Haku's dragon form, flies away, and he leaves a bunch of gold behind. Yubaba's delighted. Way to go, Sin. Uh, it was a river spirit in distress, not a sink, sink spirit. Mm. The bicycle that she pulls out was actually also pulled directly from uh, Miyazaki's experience cleaning out the river, because that's yeah. one of the things he found was a, a bicycle. So he pulled that directly from his own experience. And he loves Queen mm -hmm. as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a very There's also a Pink Floyd bicycle song too, isn't there? Ooh, I... I've got a bike. You can ride it if you like. It's got a basket and a bell. Uh, I'd let you. Fuck. <laughs> but it's a really funny song because there's, there's one stanza that's like, uh, um, <laughs> I'd let you ride it if I could, but I borrowed it. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard that? No. Yeah. It's kind of a doing drugs thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a roasted newt song. Well, let me oh, let me <laughs> let me let me open up my schedule this evening. <laughs> and then uh, everybody's all happy for her and shit. Like, way to go! You made us a bunch of money. And this, the the no face guy is like, nice. <laughs> <Huh>. Good job. <laughs> Good job is what you said. But he's like holding up two thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at, at bedtime, uh, Len and Sen are sitting on their balcony eating dumplings. Right. When suddenly uh, Sin asks about Haku and Lin says that he does all of you Baba's dirty work, right? They watch the train go by um, and uh, Lin says that she's got to get out of that place. Someday I'm getting on that train, uh, which I never really know. The train doesn't really go anywhere. Not literally. I just mean like the whole train plot thread because eventually Kamaji even gives her tickets. And I don't even think she takes the train, does she? Yeah, she does. Mm -hmm. I know she's walking on the tracks. Okay. Yeah, she walks on the track to this train station, gets on it. She takes it to Swamp Bottom. I wonder what the train symbolizes. Is that the name of the place, Swamp Bottom? Mm -hmm. Okay. Bikini Bottom. Swamp Bottom. Swamp Bottom. <laughs> Jim Ross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Sen tastes the green stuff the river spirit gave her, but finds it very unpleasant. Uh, the frog who first saw Chihiro on the bridge goes into the room with the big tub and meets the no-face guy. He's like, hey, what's up, buddy? Well, nothing bad could happen. 
gives him like gold nuggets. He's like, yeah, I got gold nuggets. And he goes like these. He's like angry now. He's been spurned by sin. Uh, <laughs> and then the spirit eats the frog. Poor frogs had it rough, as you said. <laughs> Stuck in a bubble all morning. It's out of it. <laughs> Find some gold. Hooray, my day has turned around. Finally, nope. Nope. Lunch. Oh, I didn't even catch this, but this is saying that the no face is able to use the frog's voice. Mm -hmm. That's how he talks. Oh, That's how he says that. something other than, uh, eh. he's using the frog. Huh. Didn't pick, I didn't pick up on that at all. He asked uh, for more dinner. food and then they all start bringing him a bunch of fucking food. Um, and then, uh, but he starts growing. The more he eats, he's like, ah, uh, the sin takes the river, sin takes the river spirits gift to, to the pig pen thinking it might turn her porky parents back into humans, but she can't tell which pigs are her parents. Oh no, she forgot it them. I'm just a pig. Which she gave one to one and it turned into like someone else. Hey. <laughs> it's just a I'm normal your daddy person. Now. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I'm your daddy now. <laughs> yeah, head roasted newt. Thanks for getting me out of that pig pen. <laughs> uh, what if she gives it to a pig and then it turns into pig pen from the peanuts? Mm. Mm. Could. I always get him confused with Linus. Mm -hmm. Linus has the blankie. Right. And Pigman's just always got the dust around him. Yeah. And stuff. yeah. Somebody bathe that kid. I know that kid comes from a broken home. <laughs> I know, we're all just laughing CPS at him. On him. <laughs> Instead of just calling him pig. <laughs> what a dirty asshole. <laughs> My name's Carl and I'm an orphan. <laughs> nah, you're just a dirty kid named Pigpen. As the adults. And uh, back at the bathhouse, Lynn shows... Uh, sent a lump of gold from a new guest here who's loaded. Everybody's just greedy and excited no matter how many people get eaten and how much shit they have to put up with. They just want the money, which I from, used to work in the service industry. It's very much like that. Um, and now the No Face is just eating all the staff and the food and growing larger and uglier, throwing gold around as you do. It's, it's Elon Musk, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then- It's X now. <laughs> <laughs> Chihiro sees Haku, a dragon form, flying across the water, fucking freaking out and being attacked by what looks like white birds. Uh, and she opens the balcony doors to help, lets the dragon in, tries to stop all the... But they're just like paper. It's just paper. Little paper cut. Those are crazy. Death by, death by a thousand cuts. <sighs> the worst. Mm. Uh, the dragon's all bloody. It flies out and freaks out, of the, you know, freaks out and flies out of the house. Sen goes after him, but one of the paper birds sticks to her back. Little little Ooh. little paper spy, mm -hmm. little sneak, little sneaky paper spy, sneaky little snake. So she runs, uh, but she runs on the way to find Haku into the No Face Spirit, uh, who's like super happy to see her. Finally, stops raising hell, and he's like, eh? "Gold." Uh, she declines yet again. Now he's like, "Fuck, <laughs> I'm gonna eat all these people." Yeah, and all the other people start grabbing up the gold. Uh, he eats more people, and it looks like you know. Sin's rejection of his gifts has made him increasingly angrier, which never happens to Forrest Gump. I do like how the, the, Just want to point that the bigger and bigger and bigger he gets, he at some point gets like a two, a really shitty toupee. <laughs> <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know where this mop of hair comes from, but he absorbed it. I, I, I enjoy it. It's like a, like a baron, you know, he's becoming more and more mm -hmm. capitalistic. Laugh and grow fat. But Forrest Gump would never have done that. No. No matter how many times you turn him down, he's just like, Lieutenant Dan, ice cream. <laughs> Life is like a box of people. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes that's frogs. Mm. Sometimes that's shrimp. Why is it so, <laughs> why is it so mean to that frog? <laughs> they put him in a bubble, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Can you imagine him trying to process spirited away? I want him trying to, to ex there now. explain the movie to somebody. <laughs> Oh, there's this little girl. She's trying to move, but doesn't want to. And her parents become pigs. And she runs around a little boy at a bathhouse. And they put a frog in a bubble. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. There's like a Spider-Man <laughs> who works with dirt. <laughs> 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 and they give a big old pile of shit a bath. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I hope you guys like that because that is really annoying. If not, no. my I, wife says. I enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. That's I, all would, I would listen to an audiobook narrated by your Forrest Gump. <laughs> it was the best of times. It was the <laughs> worst of times. <laughs> <laughs> Went straight for Dickens. <laughs> Chuck Dickens. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. But Sen finds herself uh, climbing outside the bathhouse on the outside, like dangerously, right? 
uh, and she notices that she has some of Haku's blood on her hand. The paper bird moves from her back to her hair. She turns to see the Yubaba bird flying back into her rooms at the top of the bathhouse. She climbs in through the window. The paper bird slips through and unlocks it for her. What a helpful paper bird. What a helpful little bird. Just tried to kill you, Haku, but now it's being really helpful. I'm confused as the viewer, right? Uh, she goes down the hall to the playroom where the baby is. Uh, and the paper bird allows her to hear you, Baba, who complains into the phone uh, that the no face guest who's eating people, right? Uh, it's like, oh, I'm tired of this shit. I got to go take care of this. And uh, Haku's just like bleeding all over the carpet. Um, and she tells him uh, to get him out of here. He'll be dead soon anyway, right? So it's very callous, you baba. Very, very not friendly. Yeah. Um, and, Ice cold. And sends at, 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 at this point, I think she's hiding in the baby cushions already. Mm -hmm. uh, and she digs through the cushions to find the big baby. <laughs> Play with me or I'll break your arm. <laughs> <laughs> the baby sucks, dude. That baby's a psychopath. I'm oh, yeah. pretty sure. Let me, let me Play with me. Or Nepo I'll break baby's my right. I know Nepo <laughs> baby, seriously. So the baby is voiced by perhaps one of the most famous uh, voice actors of all time. Mm -hmm. It is Tara Strong. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Uh, who's Tara Strong? Tara Strong does Tommy or a bunch of voices in Rugrats. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Timmy There's, Turner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Teen Titans, uh, Barbara Ger Gordon slash Batgirl, Fairly yes. Odd Parents. Uh, yeah. The prolific voice actor. I'll break your arm. Yeah. <laughs> Play with me. Speaking of voice actors, the downside to watching the sub is that you don't get to experience the dub with me. And I'm the kind of person when I watch something and I like recognize either a voice or an actor, I'm like, oh, this person's from so-and-so. So I proceed to have to do that with everybody in Spirited Away. Um, so the main character, Chihiro, is voiced by the same little girl who voiced Lilo from Lilo and Stitch. And oh, also is it really? Same girl who played Samara from The Ring. Oh, wow, okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Samara from The Ring was Lilo. Yeah, I just read through the names and didn't recognize any of them. I wow. didn't see Tara Strong there, but I guess I didn't get as far as Bo. Uh, oh, but yeah, the baby's like worried that she's a germ. And so we get the vibe that Yubaba's a helicopter mom and the baby just needs to be, is like a decent baby, but needs to have more freedom. Well, the, the walls and ceiling and floor of that room is just pillows, like almost like a padded cell. Oh, good analysis. Yeah. Because the baby's a psychopath. A fluffy and prison. And needs to be in a padded cell. It's true, though. Simultaneously smothered and also has no real connections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Play with me or I'll break your arm. Play with me or I'll break your arm. I remember that <laughs> so well. It's that's terrifying. What my, that's what my other dog, Ellie, says to me. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> but uh, Sen goes out to the main room. Uh, there's more Haku bleeding in dragon form. Bo keeps following. Play with me. Uh, the paper bird turns into a Yubaba-like woman, turns the baby into a fucking mouse, uh, turns the three green heads into the baby. The baby. <laughs> uh, and then she also turns the Yubaba bird into a tiny bird. Is it a bird or like a little mosquito or something? I thought it was a little fly. A little fly. Yeah, some kind of bug, right? <laughs> Buzz. 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 Chew. Uh, Cause that's, it turns out Yubaba's twin sister and she hates Yubaba and she's trying to fuck with her now. Zaniba's just like, <laughs> That whore. I hate my nephew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my, my nephew sucks. Fuck them kids. Yeah, it's true. Uh, so <laughs> she says that Haku had stolen her magical golden seal, and that's why she was paper stabbing him <laughs> and wants it back. Uh, the seal carries a curse uh, that Zaniba says will kill anyone who steals it. So Haku is dying because of the curse, and uh, uh, Sen says, well, I got to go get it back to save him, I guess. Right? And uh, anyway, they go. Haku had fallen uh, and sent as well through a hole. It's like a giant chimney or something, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then uh, they land among some like spirits. And Haku, still in dragon form, flies them to the boiler room where they're always safe. Everybody likes hanging out with Kamaji. He's got the he's got the roasted newts. He's got good herbs. <laughs> got tea. Everything you need for a good party. The soots. Yeah. But come on, he's like, oh, it looks serious. He's he's the dude where everybody, you know how like every workplace has somebody who works in a particular area that maybe doesn't get a lot of foot traffic, but everyone goes to that person just to get away mm. from their job and hang out. So that's what he, that's he's what he personality is. hire. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was also voiced by the person who played Cogsworth in Beauty and the Beast. Ooh, Ooh. Mm -hmm. deep cut. Well, Sen makes him eat the river spirit's gift, which he makes him vomit 
what we later find out is Yubaba's controlling device and the seal that he stole from Zaniba. Do we think that like Yubaba made him steal the seal and now he's paying the price for it? That would be my guess. It just occurred to me because the whole thing with Yubaba, um, everybody else in the in the bathhouse is like you know their their clothing, everything is like very traditional. It's Japanese, but she's the only person aside from also her sister to wear like that Western outfit, and even like in her penthouse, that is all Western architecture. And mm. it, it, I, from when I when I was reading, it was supposed to be just a subtle call out to how in. The Meiji period, which is where a lot of our architecture is based off of and the time where Western industrialization was like uh, affecting Japan and that kind of Western capitalism was kind of infecting everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I would I would not be surprised if Yubaba absolutely told Haku to steal that because it, her greed seems to know no bounds. Yeah, literal like a, an appropriation analog mm -hmm. kind of thing. And they, it's him saying we will stab you with paper. A bunch. Contracts. Mm -hmm. Sue you? Yeah. We getting too far into the symbolism here? <sighs> it That's what we wins? call it NDA, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, she throws up the shit. And she's like, oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's got to like stomp on it, right? Um, it's kind of adorable. The stomping little, on this, this little curse. But I like when she finally barefooted stomps it. She's like, ugh. Wish I didn't do this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the curse was adorable. You're right. Uh, but he thinks, you know, they, they start to think that maybe Zaniba can help. Right. If she may, especially if she gives back the golden seal. Uh, and this is when he gives her the tickets and she's willing to help Haku rather than save her parents. Right. I guess my parents can wait. Lynn comes in at this point, uh, I think, to say that the silent spirit yeah. is a monster called No Face um, who swallowed three people. And Sen admits that she let him in. It was wet outside. I didn't want to have he, him be wet. He was drowned. Yeah, come on. Uh, he didn't have an umbrella. And Lynn's like, oh, you're going to get in so much trouble for that, for letting him in. Ella? Hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> That's a banger. <laughs> um, and then he, this is when Kamaji gives her the train tickets. Uh, and Lynn's like, oh, my God, where'd you get train tickets? Because remember, Lynn always wanted to ride a train. Kamaji warns Chihiro uh, that the train only runs run one way. And it's really funny that he does like they make this whole thing of it. But then Chihiro is literally just like, I'll just walk back. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I'm not lazy like you. I don't know why everybody's <laughs> tripping. It's like literally right over there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, then he's, she's like, OK. Uh, so then she takes off. Right. I think it's, I think she takes off pretty much immediately. I, I kind of cackled at this part where um, Lynn uh, expresses some sort of disbelief, like what's going on? And come on, she's like, don't you get it? It's love. You frigid old bitch. Because <laughs> 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 he's like something you wouldn't recognize. Uh, oh, OK. Only people who go on trains know this. Mm -hmm. Loser. Because <laughs> you don't have tickets. Yo, you never been on a train? <laughs> Sucks. You don't know love then. Oh, you don't have soot sprites hanging out with you all day? You got nobody? Mm -hmm. Lonely. Choo choo your ass out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no bitches, no soots, mm -hmm. no nothing. It's true. Just go back with the frogs. Send newts. Yeah. <laughs> She's just addicted to newts, lonely. <laughs> Yubaba tells uh, Sin to get every last bit of gold out of no face who's grown too huge and bloated before evicting him from the bathhouse. And before Sin goes to see No-Face, Yubaba asks, what's that dirty mouse doing here? But the mouse Chew. is her baby. That's her baby. No-Face tries to bribe uh, Jihiro with the gold again uh, and saying, I'm not giving it to anybody else. <laughs> and uh, she tells him she wants him, she wants to leave because she has somewhere important to go. Uh, but that he should leave too because Yubaba doesn't want you here. So mm -hmm. we should both leave for yeah. different reasons. Yeah. Not, I don't have to. No, I want to be but you do. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but she asked, do you have anywhere to go? And he's like, oh, no. Uh, and he says that he's lonely. So No Face says he wants uh, to eat Sen. Uh, <laughs> uh, but she makes him eat the remainder of the River Spirit's gift instead because so that helped Haku and him. It causes him to vomit uncontrollably a little bit on Yubaba, including all the people that he's eaten, which is nice. It's frog still alive, at least. Just had a bad I'm day. I'm happy for that fancy boy. Mm -hmm. He just had a bad day. Pray for him. Uh, but yeah. Another day is a frog, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Nudes in the chat for that fancy boy. <laughs> Nudes in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Nudes in the chat. Yeah. You got to be real <laughs> enunciate with that. What do you think I said? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want any wild things in the chat, you know? 
no unsolicited reptiles here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's right. Send like, oh, someone sent an iguana? <laughs> Gross. I don't want pictures of your lizard. <laughs> I don't. Stop sending me pictures of your lizard, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Unsolicited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he coughs up everybody. And then eventually she's like, oh, he can come with us. And, and Lynn's like really scared. Like, he's going to fucking eat you, dude. It's like, no, nah, he's cool. He's fine now. It's all right. Look at him. <laughs> Uh, I like how she threatens him, like as she's like paddling away. Like, yeah, if you hurt that girl, you're in big trouble. Yeah, it's like, what are you gonna do? I love the energy that No Face has. It, it's just the energy of like similar to if I ran up a flight of stairs, where he's like, uh, so "Why are you making fun of me? I'm really <laughs> tired. I threw up. Mm. I threw up. I froed up. <laughs> I froed up. <laughs> I froed up a fancy frog." <laughs> <laughs> so they ride the train to Swamp Bottom where Zaniba lives. Everybody's like transparent and shit again. Uh, Haku wakes up in the boiler room and Kamaji's like, dude, a bunch of shit went down while you were sleeping. Uh, and like, Sen saved you. And she went to, to Zaniba's, right? And she cured you with the power of love. And he's like, oh, man. And, <laughs> and then Huey Lewis and the news started playing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, New York, New York. Um, and then I was going for the power of love, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is my only Huey Lewis I know. Uh, Huey and, Lewis's first album was <laughs> quite amazing. Uh, the big baby that's fake, which is actually the three heads, is eating. Yubaba's nearby, counting no faces gold, right? Haku comes in, something precious to her has been replaced, and Yubaba looks closely. And then the baby turns back into the three fucking heads and they run away like, oh, 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 And Haku says, the baby is with your sister. Uh, so Yubaba asks what he wants to go get the baby back for her. And he says, sends freedom, Tara sends contract. And then she's like, OK, but only if she can pass the final test, if she fails, she's mine. And I was disappointed in Haku's negotiating ability at that point, because he could be like, no, that's not the deal. No, the deal is, do you want your baby or not? Yeah. But instead he's like, ah, you got me. Mm, you and your games. <laughs> <laughs> you're too fast, you baba. No wonder I'm stuck here. No wonder you're running this place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, he agrees to it. So then they get off the train. They look for Zaniba. Uh, they find fucking Zaniba. There's like a bug bird and the mouse are with them. Right. Uh, which is the baby. And the, 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 the baba bird. bird. Yeah. Just so we're all clear. The YB. <laughs> the the U-Bop bird, if you will. Yeah, mm. the U-Bird. Yeah. Sounds like an app. <laughs> U-Burb. U-Bird. <laughs> I don't know what it would be for. Just be like, it, it, it's just like, it uses your camera to AR make you a bird. <laughs> sure. U-Bird. <laughs> 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 That's okay. a very literal interpretation of what the app yeah, would be and for. It, it's got all the different birds on there. Like so by your geese, definition, eagles, YouTube Falcons. is just an app that turns you into a tube with AR. Yeah. YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> YouTube. Okay. Have different you seen, color tube. Have you seen mm -hmm. Tube Girl? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'll show you Tube Girl. <laughs> I don't want to. Don't look up Tub Girl. That's I'm very trying, different. That's... Tub Girl is not to be looked up. Tube Girl is funny. That's what I thought you were talking about. Did you think it was about. talking about Tub Girl? Yeah. No, do not look up Tub Girl. I just Girl. had like a PTSD memory from being a teenager <laughs> and was like, what? Oh, 2007 internet. Ah! <sighs> Any hoozle. Kyrie, do you know what Tub Girl is? Nope. Don't look it up. It's gross. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. I just remember the revulsion. There were a couple of things that I remember like, oh, don't look this up. And then naturally you do and you hate yourself. Yeah. But not, not Tub Girl. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, yes, I know I almost said something else. Any, can we get back to spirited away? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm begging you. <laughs> Chihiro is 10. Yeah. Only, the, <laughs> thank you. Only love. In case y'all forgot. <laughs> uh, only love can break Zaniba's spell, blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, I love she the said little lamppost. That, that, I, I like that she says that the mouse and the bug bird spell wore off a long time ago. They can change back whenever they want. They just fuck with being a mouse, yeah. I think. I think the baby's like enjoying the freedom. Mm -hmm. The you baby's know? enjoying the freedom and the the Yubaba bird is enjoying having a buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And not looking like Yubaba. Haku shows up. Zaniba says that she'll forgive Haku if he takes care of Sen. What a nice lady. And then Zaniba asks No Face to stay with her. 
which now, now he's not going to be lonely. He's like, huh? She's like, you're not very helpful as far uh-huh. as conversation goes, but he's great at knitting. If they just give him a frog to eat, he can talk. Mm-hmm. Something to think about for the future. <laughs> a small sacrifice. To yeah. Pay. Well, next time the mailman shows up at her place. What mailman? What mailman? But while they're flying, Haku, he remembers. My name is the Kohaku River, which is very similar oh. to Haku. I don't know why I didn't remember that. Oh, wow. And he saved her when she was younger. She fell in. Yeah. Pulled her to shore. You were going to drown. And I was like, not on my watch. <laughs> it was my Baywatch phase. Dude. Dude. I came running in slow motion and pulled you out. You're welcome. And then I caught a big wave. It was pretty gnar. <laughs> Radical. Yeah. You ever go snowboarding on fresh <laughs> <laughs> on fresh pow? Ew, fresh pow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I don't like that. Fresh pow, dude. Uh, yeah, Haku is the Kohaku River. Oh my God, thank you so much for helping me remember my name. That's why we know each other. Because I was like, a river. Uh, and then, then we get to the end, the test a deals, a deal here. You got to do the, you pick, you get one try, which of these pigs is your mommy and daddy. And then, uh, Chihiro's like, none of them. And that's, she passed. <gasps> Whoa! You did it. You did it. Yay. And then she gets to leave the spirit world and everybody's happy and good. Her parents are back to normal waiting at the car, but it's been like, how long do you think a week, two weeks? I they said know. there was fine dust collecting on the inside. It takes so. a while. Yeah, and the path seemed uh, pretty overgrown. Do you think they're going to like get to the new house and be like, they sold it <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> to someone we're... else? Yeah. What do you mean we're dead? <laughs> <laughs> what do you gonna... mean the movers had squatters rights now? <laughs> <laughs> There's just a bunch of homeless people in there. They're banging and shit. Thanks for the F, Shaq. <laughs> Dirty Mike and the Boys. No. A sequel I never want to see. <laughs> yeah. Dirty Mike and the Boys. <laughs> You've never seen the other guys? It's so good. <laughs> they find their abandoned car after it was stolen mm. weeks later. And there's like a bunch of, it's like, yeah, a bunch of people have been fucking in it for weeks. It's called a soup kitchen. <laughs> and then there's a note in there and it's a, oh, they left a note. Thanks for the F shack. Dirty Mike and the boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's where the river spirit went. It's so, <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Oh. <sighs> but they live happily ever after? Yeah, I guess. Yep. Haku says she's not allowed to look back because that's kind of how growing up works. You have to kind of keep moving forward. You're not allowed to look back. I didn't think about that symbolism. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate th- that point of view, Kyrie, you coming in and, and laying that down for me. It really connects some dots. I appreciate that. And she hears all confident now. Dad's finally being a father. And he's like, look, I know a new home in school is a bit scary. And she's like, I think I can handle it. Because she's been through some crazy shit now. Grown people <laughs> eaten by a monster. There was a frog in a bubble. Dr. Robotnik made me take off my shoes in his boiler room. And he was the nice one. Oh, did I mention he was a spider? <laughs> yeah. I had to get a full time job, father. <laughs> I'm 10. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, when I, I wasn't a bad girl, all right? <laughs> or one of the normal little kid jobs. No. I worked at a bathhouse. Oh, you a what? <laughs> you ever see a, a, a radish spirit before? Mm. I saw his nips. <laughs> Father. Everyone there was hooked on Newt. <laughs> Ravenous. And then, and then the moms in the passage seat. That's nice, honey. <laughs> yeah, she's the dad of the family. <laughs> I remember when I used to do Newt. <laughs> <laughs> back on your. <laughs> Like when your father was a generous lover. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just, all we do is go to theme parks and eat food. Mm. Shut down theme parks from the 90s. Mm-hmm. But that is Spirited Away. Thank you, Infamous, for recommending that. And thank you so much to Kyrie for joining us on the goofy shit that we do. Thank you for having me. That's this a is a lot of fun. I, I've laughed so much during this. <laughs> thank you. I, I mean, my face long. hurts a little bit. Thank you good. to No Face fun. as well mm-hmm. for coming, uh, for stopping oh, by. That's true. Mm. Eh? Well, he was lonely and he had nothing else to do, <laughs> to be fair. I'm going to have a. I'm he was happy a, you let him in. I'm going to have a hard time getting him out of this apartment. <laughs> Anywho, <so. laughs> that's about all the time we have, I think, for now. We got to go return some videotapes. My name is Kit. I'm Kyrie. And I'm Steve. And this was Streaming Things. Happy streaming. <laughs>